everybody. I am Ginger Wolf and welcome Stripped Finance. This video is for informational and entertainment purposes only. I am a feature entertainer and stripper not a financial consultant. Please speak to your financial advisor about any financial matters. And with that out of the way. Let's get into the video. Hello everyone, so welcome back to Stripped Finance. I know it's been a while since you saw me, but I had a day off, don't mind my hair, okay? Because it looks a little wild, that's the right word, it looks a little wild whenever I get a conditioning treatment done on it. So, today, we're going to be talking about coupon stripping, and I mean, who better to talk about stripping than a stripper, okay? Now, all of this information can actually be found on Investopedia. Normally, I have everything written down so I can just memorize a script. But I have insomnia, so here we are at 3 in the morning. I'm just sitting here trying to figure out what I want to do, because I cannot sleep. So, we're going to read a article by James Chen, and it's been fact-checked by Marcus Reeves. So, first part is obviously what is coupon stripping. So coupon stripping is the separation of a straight bond's periodic interest payments from its principal repayment obligation to create a series of individual securities. It's a lot of fancy words, I know. I'll get to the key points, like the key takeaways, in just a second. In coupon stripping, the underlying bond becomes a zero coupon bond known as a strip bond and each interest payment becomes its own separate zero coupon bond. And I know some of you are going to make fun of how I say coupon. It's literally how it's spelled. It's not coupon. There's no Q. It's coupon. C-O-U. So the key takeaways, right, are very simple. Coupon stripping bifurcates the coupon interest and the principal repayment features of a bond creating two individual securities that both function as a zero coupon bond. Next key takeaway. Since interest payments are not made on the strip bond before maturity, there is no reinvestment risk. Next is stripping coupons from U.S. Treasuries creates strips or separate trading of registered interest and principal of securities. And the last and final, right, is for tax purposes, the IRS treats the value earned at maturity on a strip bond as earned interest. Those are the key takeaways. Now let's get into how it works. If y'all see the glare from my laptop here, right, you can see it. Check, 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 check. Like I said, I have crackhead brain, so here we are at 3 in the morning. Back to the video, though. So, Coupon stripping is a structural technique that involves purchasing a bond and detaching its principal and interest components into individual securities that can be sold independently. The bond is repackaged into a number of zero coupon or strip securities with varying maturity dates. The security of a bond's interest payments coupon is worthwhile when it results in the sum of the parts being larger than the whole. In contrast, if the proceedings from stripping turn out to be the same as the cost of purchasing the bonds, then coupon stripping will be a losing proposition. Each coupon payment entitles its total to a specific cash return on a specific date. In addition, the body of the security calls for repayment of the principal amount at maturity. The market price of a strip bond reflects the user's credit rating and the present value of the maturity amount, which is determined by the time to maturity and the prevailing interest rates in the economy. I know that our economy kind of sucks right now, but still, that said, it's still a good idea, right? Because 
at the end of the day, it still takes a while for bonds to mature. Back to what we were doing. The further away from the maturity date, the lower the present value and vice versa. The lower the interest rates in the economy, the higher the present value of the zero coupon bond and vice versa. The present value of the bond will fluctuate widely with changes in prevailing interest rates since there are no regular interest payments to stabilize the value. As a result, the impact of the interest rate fluctuations on a strip bond known as the bond duration is higher than the impact on a periodic coupon paying bonds. Now I know I just threw a whole lot of information at you because I kind of threw a whole lot of information at myself. But James Chen even in, like included an example. His special circumstances. We'll get to that next. But first the example. So coupon stripping is common practice to U.S. Treasuries where they are known by the acronym STRIPS, which is once again separate trading of registered interest and principle of securities. It's still a whole lot of nonsense, but okay. It's just strips. It's funny if you keep it that way. That's the reason why I decided to do this video. It made me laugh. So for example, if an investment bank held a $50 million treasury note that paid 5% interest annually for five years, coupon stripping would turn that bond into six new zero coupon bonds. One $50 million bond that matures in five years and five 2.5 million bonds that would each mature in one of those coming five years. Each bond will sell at a different discount to face value based on its time to maturity. So basically it works like fractions. I kind of sucked at fractions. But I get it, for the most part, right? Alright, special considerations. Coupon stripping can, app, can also divide up larger bonds with a particular interest rate into a series of smaller bonds with different interest rates to satisfy investors' demands for particular types of bonds. This practice is seen in the mortgage-backed security market, which I will be doing a video on probably in the next few days. I'm flip-flopping on whether or not I just want to go back to like recording it with my kind of weird personality like this. We all can see my face. My face right here. So, Leave a comment down below and we'll, I'll go with whatever y'all say the most. Because I know that some people really like the, uh, like the, uh, whiteboard doodle things. And it's, it's a lot easier for me to make videos that way because then I can actually just do them while I'm at work or while I'm traveling as opposed to having to set up this whole setup to record one ten minute video. So. Any hoosie. Back to where we were going. The zero coupon bonds created from coupon stripping make no periodic interest payments to investors. The bondholder receives the payment at maturity. The spread between the purchase price and the par value at maturity represents the return earned on the investment. If the security is held to maturity, the return earned is taxable as interest income. Even though the bondholder does not receive interest income, they are still required to report the imputed interest on the bond to the IRS each year. The amount of interest an investor must claim and pay taxes on the strip bond each year adds to the cost basis of the bond. If the bond is sold before it matures, a capital gain or loss may ensue. Basically, all it's saying is, if you make money on this, one way or the other, you gotta tell the big baddies. That's really all it is. So, that's pretty much it for this one, guys. I want to thanks, you know, James Chen. Pretty sure that was his name. So, 
double check. Yeah, James Chen. And Marcus. Marcus Reeves for this awesome little, uh, awesome little educational article here. My brain had to think for a second of what word it was trying to come up with. But that's pretty much it, y'all. Tell me if you prefer seeing my actual face or just those little whiteboard doodles. And we'll go from there. And I'll see you next time. Bye! Hi guys, so it's Ginger Wolf. I'm out here hunting you new content. So don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. And I'll see you next time. Bye!